Welcome to Montcalm Community College's celebration of MLK Day 2021. Not only are we announcing the winners of our essay contest, but we're reading the first place entries aloud. Thank you to everyone who participated in this year's event. We have some amazing writers in our community. This year's Honorable Mention Award winners are Aubrey Fiesel, Damian Hunt, Elena Campbell, Marianne Rose, Megan Faust, Natalie Briggs, Saren Roy, and Trinity Rose. Injustice Anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Originally spoken by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in Alabama, 1963. Congratulations to our top three placers from the kindergarten to fourth grade division. They are as follows. In third place, Elena Lotholtz from Walnut Hills Elementary. In second place, Ben Traynor from Lincoln Heights Elementary. And in first place, from Cedar Crest Elementary, Ella Gardner. Congratulations to everyone. Martin Luther King Jr. by Ella Gardner, Sheridan, Michigan, Cedar Crest Elementary. Martin Luther King was a Baptist minister and social rights activist in the United States in the 1950s and 1960s. He was the leader of the American Civil Rights Movement. He organized lots of peaceful protests as head of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, including the famous March on Washington. Martin Luther King was born in Atlanta, Georgia on January 15, 1929. And so, on or close to this day every year, we remember Martin Luther King. He was the middle child. When he grew up, he preached with his dad in the small, struggling Ebenezer Baptist Church with around 13 members and made it into a forceful congregation. He married Coretta Scott King, and they had four children. His famous speech was on, on August 28, 1963, and that day of his speech is very special to me because that day is my birthday. His speech was called, I Have a Dream. Martin Luther King's speech was for equality and freedom for everyone. This means that no matter what you look like, you should be treated the same. In 1964, Martin Luther King won the Nobel Peace Prize. The Nobel Peace Prize is a prestigious award and people win it when they do awesome things for other people. But not everyone liked Martin Luther King's speech and ideas, so someone assassinated him on April 4th, 1968. But he lives on as a hero to all of us. I have the audacity to believe that peoples everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, education and culture for their minds, and dignity, equality, and freedom for their spirits spoken by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in Norway, 1964. Congratulations to our top three placers from the fifth grade to eighth grade division. They are as follows. In third place, Ava Hunting from Greenville Middle School. In second place, Addison Lentz from Greenville Middle School. And in first place, Alexis Curry from Central Montcalm Middle School. Congratulations. Looking at a water fountain, extremely thirsty, but knowing you cannot take a drink because you're a person of color. As a child, Martin Luther King Jr. had to live with this treatment. Martin was taught at a young age to not show your anger at this treatment. This man grew to be the start of the end to this unjust treatment. Martin Luther King Jr. grew up to be a social rights activist. He was known for playing a huge role in the civil rights movement. Ten years before his assassination, Martin was attacked by a mentally ill woman and survived the stab wound. This made Martin even more dedicated to nonviolence. The success of the Montgomery bus boycott led Martin and the other civil rights activists to create the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, which was a group that was determined to achieve equality for people of color through peaceful protest. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is celebrated to remember the legacy of Martin. He was an influential figure 
that still plays a key role in giving African Americans the rights and equality they deserve. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is celebrated in January on the third Monday. Martin Luther King Jr.'s nonviolent determination won him the Nobel Peace Prize. In his famous speech, I Have a Dream, he hopes no one will be judged by another because of the color of their skin. That speech inspired so many people, which made it his most famous speech. Martin's life was cut short on April 4th, 1968, in Memphis, Tennessee. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Written in the 1963 book, Strength to Love, by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Congratulations to the top three placers from the 9th to 12th grade division. They are, in third place, Brooklyn Trainer from Greenville High School. In second place, Dominic Sadeo from Greenville High School. And in first place, Maya Hagland from Greenville High School. Congratulations. When we think of Martin Luther King Jr., I think most of us put our minds to the I Have a Dream speech. Yes, what an amazing impact that had, but we must think of everything else he did. He was a peaceful protester, a civil rights activist. He wanted greater equality for America. The work that he did has impacted us up until this point in time, and it will keep impacting us throughout the future. Because of Mr. King's amazing devotion to decreasing racial discrimination, we have a day each year, specifically the third Monday of January, to celebrate him. To give a more in-depth detail of why we celebrate him, I would say because of what he achieved. During the time that he lived, African Americans were so discriminated against that the problem would last up until the present. He showed us that the color of your skin does not define you as a human being. As said in his I Have a Dream speech, he will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. And it's true, he really has. A quarter of a million people went to that speech. It shows that people had the same hope for equality as he did. Due to the fact that he isn't with us anymore is the reason we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. His voice needs to be heard throughout generations. The work that Martin Luther King Jr. did for our society will forever be remembered. He wanted to show us that people could protest in a more peaceful way. Rather than using violence, use words for what you believe in. Within everything going on throughout the past year, we come to think of something that was towards the beginning, which was the George Floyd and Black Lives Matter movement. This movement brought back more attention for the African Americans. It makes us think of Mr. King. His contributions, whether it was peacefully showing what his ideas were or showing us right from wrong, the two have a grand connection that shows the problems they face. With such an incessant problem, he showed us that this is beyond wrong. He proves that society must be more accepting of one another. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15, 1929, growing up in Atlanta, Georgia. Throughout his early years, his well-educated parents would help him become a pastor. His parents influenced a lot of how Mr. King was able to become the leader of the civil rights movement. The bus boycotts of 1955 were also a big influence. He was later awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964 for his nonviolence resistance for racial preconception. Sadly, he was assassinated while standing on his motel balcony on April 4, 1968, at the age of 39. The reason we remember Mr. King is due to the fact that the 50s and 60s weren't that long ago. His change wouldn't happen overnight, and it still is continuing to get better. Racial discrimination is sadly still ongoing throughout the 50 states. Injustice due to the color of your skin shouldn't even be something to consider in the 20th century. It shouldn't have even been something to consider in the past. Man is only cruel to man. What he did showed us that you could conquer whatever you believed in. Whether it's something small or something that affects millions of people, you can achieve it. According to the most recent census, 
African Americans make up 13.4% of our population. To put that in a better perspective, that's about 42 million people. 42 million people that help the economy flow. 42 million people that have established a life here. And to be treated poorly for no reason makes no sense. By using his own words, Martin Luther King Jr. showed generation upon generation what they could achieve. This is what King did for us as a society. And this is how we remember him. True peace is not merely the absence of tension. It is the presence of justice. Written words by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his book, Stride Toward Freedom, published in 1958. Congratulations to the top two placers from the MCC College Division. Number two, Morella Clem. And number one, Allison Skookseth. Congratulations. An essay by Allison Grace Skookseth. Who is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Celebrating him through our actions. As a dual enrolled college student living in a small rural community, my knowledge of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. has been, to say the least, limited. If I remember correctly, to celebrate Martin Luther King Day, my elementary school teachers would find pieces of nonfiction. Today's kids will easily recognize the Who Was series with a bobblehead image, Who Was Martin Luther King Jr. And we'd also take a trip to the media center to view the librarian's book display to honor his legacy. Unfortunately, most of our reading about Dr. King would result in an accelerated reader quiz. Question one, who was Martin Luther King Jr.? Answer. Martin Luther King Jr. was an American Baptist minister and activist who was a leader in the civil rights movement. Correct. When was he born? Answer, January 15th, 1929. Correct. What is he best known for? Answer, for his role in the advancement of civil rights. Correct. Similarly, in high school, our MLK literature became intertwined with assessing how he utilized rhetorical devices in his famous I Have a Dream address or other influential speeches. I have encountered this example in order to prepare for the College Board's Advanced Placement English exam. Prompt. Please use I Have a Dream by Martin Luther King Jr. to analyze the device of illusion. Illusion, a reference explicit or implicit to something in previous literature or history. As I scroll back through my K-12 experiences, I do not fault teachers for my limited exposure to Martin Luther King Jr. With the rigid demands of state testing, there simply isn't enough time in the schedule to accomplish everything. I also have to take accountability for my own learning and the application of knowledge. Here are my reflections on Dr. King's educational and life journey from the book, The Autobiography of Martin Luther King Jr., edited by Claiborne Carson. In Atlanta, Georgia, Martin Luther King Jr. was born during a period in U.S. history where black people living in the South were segregated from white people. Under the doctrine of separate but equal, imposed segregation was not anything close to equal. Although slavery was abolished, life was full of painful reminders that the color of one's skin determined opportunities. Even thinking about it today, I cannot even fathom not being able to sit side by side with my best friend in a movie theater. I wouldn't blame Martin's family if they were bitter. However, they maintained a very loving and stable household during a time when the climate was racially hostile and unstable. In Martin's autobiography, a turning point in his young life occurred when one of his white playmates could no longer play with him due to the color of his skin. Full of anger, Martin told his father, a preacher, that he hated his friend. Instead of agreeing with his son, his dad stressed, it's your duty as a Christian to love him. This request didn't come easy to Martin at the time. It took time to mature with the support of education and experience. Martin's parents both valued the importance of an education and ensured that he embraced his own. With the support of exceptional educators, Martin thrived in his long educational journey. Before he attended college, one of his high school teachers recognized his unique talent in oration. And at age 14, his teacher took him across the state to compete in a speech contest. Martin won with his subject titled, The Negro and the Constitution. 
As mentioned previously, I've had the opportunity to dissect some of his most famous sermons and speeches. But if I had to isolate the most important item that he has written, it would be directly taken from his speech that won the contest. We cannot have an enlightened democracy with one great group living in ignorance. We cannot have a healthy nation with one-tenth of the people ill-nourished, sick, harboring germs of disease, which recognize no color lines, obey no Jim Crow laws. We cannot have a nation orderly and sound with one group so ground down and thwarted that it is almost forced into unsocial attitudes and crime. We cannot be truly Christian people so long as we flout the central teachings of Jesus, brotherly love, and the golden rule. We cannot come to full prosperity with one great group so ill-delayed that it cannot buy goods. So as we gird ourselves to defend democracy from foreign attack, let us see to it that increasingly at home we give fair play and free opportunity for all people. At only age 14, Martin understood how to frame his experiences into a convincing argument to end racial segregation, to fight against poverty, and to support humanity as a united nation. This was just the beginning for Martin. Leaving high school early and only with an eighth grade reading level, Martin went on, like his own father and mom's grandfather, to attend Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. If ever a student questions the value of higher education, it would be wise to reflect upon Martin Luther King's time in college. I imagine it was both a confusing and liberating experience. He encountered diverse reading materials, professors who encouraged critical thinking, and participated in activities that embraced his passion for racial justice. From what I read, he appeared much like a typical college student. He was overloaded with so many things to ponder and to consider. As I have future hopes to become a lawyer, I could relate to his next goal, more education. In total, Martin earned his Bachelor of Arts from Morehouse, a Bachelor of Divinity from Crozer, and then his PhD in Theology from Boston University. Without question, Martin's vast education helped prepare him for future challenges. With an arsenal of knowledge from influential teachers under his belt and a unique gift for expressing his ultimate vision for social justice in powerful words, Martin felt confident in how to unite others. Nonviolent resistance can be used to promote social change. It was time for action, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his new wife returned back to Atlanta, where he served as a preacher who faced the challenges of segregation head on. In only 39 years, Dr. King both challenged and changed the world. What I found remarkable in reading this particular autobiography is when the pronoun that he used changed from I to we. Why? In 1955, after Rosa Parks was arrested for violating segregation laws by refusing to move and sit where black people were allowed on the bus, Dr. King organized the Montgomery boy bus boycott. King stated, this is not a drama with only one actor. More precisely, it is the chronicle of 50,000 Negroes who took to heart the principles of nonviolence, who learned to fight for their rights with a weapon of love, and who, in the process, acquired a new estimate of their own human worth. Dr. King's successful boycott was integral for challenging segregation in the South. Dr. King was persistent in his mission for fair treatment, regardless of race, Finally, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 superseded all state and local laws requiring segregation. He is known as a leader who didn't have to rely on violence for social change. He not only used his intelligence and eloquent words to inspire change, but also put those words into action. The public witnessed Dr. King gracing the cover of Time magazine as the first African American to be given the honor of Man of the Year in 1963. Following that recognition, his civil rights influence for African Americans was celebrated globally as he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. Unfortunately, by striving to advance a nation to treat all of its citizens with fairness and respect, his actions incited fear. For many groups who opposed Dr. King by allowing oppressed people a chance to succeed was a threat to dismantle their accepted racist viewpoints and practices. Throughout the civil rights movement, Dr. King was jailed and abused for trying to speak out and demand change. His entire family also endured violence as well. Dr. King's dream for a world where people would be judged by their character rather than the color of their skin came with great risk. 
Sadly, in 1968, Dr. King was murdered, murdered and taken away from the world too soon. His dream didn't end there, though. His vision of a we is part of our lives and hard work today. Hard work involves responding and rising up, united. This past year, after a black man from Minnesota was wrongfully mistreated and killed by the police, I supported my best friend, Aria, in assisting her, along with other high school students, by organizing a peaceful protest in our local park this summer. Despite choosing to protest in the midst of a heated climate fueled by racism and coupled with the fear of a raging pandemic, over 100 residents, both young and old, gathered together to say, we will not tolerate racism. We are here for one another. I think Dr. King would have been proud to see our efforts that day. In 2021, his philosophy of nonviolent protest to promote social change is relevant today more than ever. Make a career of humanity. Commit yourself to the noble struggle for equal rights. You will make a greater person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer world to live in. Spoken by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the District of Columbia in 1959. Thank you for listening. On behalf of the Montcalm co-curricular team and essay judges, thank you to everyone that participated in this year's contest with a special congratulations to all the winners. This concludes Montcalm Community College's 2021 observation and celebration of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.